the first thing we want to do is mask out the, the eyes, teeth, and tongue. The character from Character Creator comes with its own polygroup, so it's easy enough to hide the entire body to do that. Speaking of polygroups, you don't want to mess around with the polygroups for this model. It could end up changing the vertex order, and you won't be able to bring it back into Character Creator. For the brushes I'm using, you'll notice that I'm mostly using the Move tool. For the low resolution mesh, that's my go-to brush. I'd say for around 80 to 90% of this process, I'm just using the Move tool. At this part of the modeling process, what you really want to focus on is the silhouette of your model. So make sure to rotate your model around a lot to see if there are any problems with the silhouette at various angles. Now remember this is a game model and a main asset of that, so it has to look good at all angles. Now I'm focusing mostly on the face since that's the only part of her that's really visible, but the clothes will be conforming to the shape of her body, so I wouldn't want to neglect that. Moving ahead, you can see that the model is smoother now, but I didn't actually add any subdivision levels to this. This one's just a preview. I just turned on the dynamic subdivisions by pressing D on the unsubdivided model. Now we're not going to be subdividing this model seeing that it's a real-time mesh, but this is a good way to see if there are any bumps or other artifacts on the model. So now I have wireframe mode turned on, and this is just to see if I'm putting the details in the right places topology-wise. So here we have our finished low resolution model and just to compare I actually saved out a morph target of what it looked like before so this was from character creator and these are our edits so now before going in and adding some more subdivision levels to this model to work on our high resolution mesh I want to store a new morph target and you'll see why in a while so I'm going to delete the existing morph target and I'm going to hit store empty and I'm going to give this model a few subdivision levels Control D, Control D, and going back down to the lowest subdivision level, you'll see that it's changed slightly, and that's not really what I want. So if I hit switch, since we stored a morph target before, and there we go, back to the way it was. And now you can safely go to the higher subdivision levels and start working on your high resolution sculpt. The high resolution sculpt of this model is actually going to be very simple. She's a very stylized character, so I just want subtle details. I'm not even going to be sculpting in any pores, wrinkles, or other high frequency skin details. And for the wrinkles, I'm just going to be adding those for her lips. So what I'm doing now is just refining the existing details, like the cartilage of her ears and the muscles of her neck. Using the standard brush, the damn standard brush, and the pinch brush, I'm also adding in some slight creasing to, to some of her features, like the bridge of her nose and her chin. Now I've gone to the highest subdivision level and added in some layers. These are just layers to help me out with sculpting. Now, so here I made one to move the eyelashes out of the way. And now I'm making one to open her mouth up a bit so that it's easier to sculpt in the wrinkles.
And now we can go in and sculpt the details on our lips. For this step, I'm using the damn standard brush for the creases and also a bit of the clay brush. So now for the eyebrows. The first thing I did was turn off all the other layers and store a morph target on the highest subdivision level. And now you can see I'm sculpting with the clay buildup brush. And if I make a mistake, I can erase that stroke easily with the morph brush. The morph brush works only if you have a stored morph target, which is why I stored one at the start of this step. So here's our high resolution sculpt and we are now about ready to start exporting our OBJs and baking our maps to bring back into Character Creator. But before we can bake our maps, we have to fix the UVs of this model. Now Character Creator exports out a model with its UVs already laid out, but it's not laid out in a way that ZBrush likes working with. So to fix that, we're going to go into Blender and fix those UVs. So here we are inside Blender, and I'm going to import in the original OBJ that we exported from Character Creator. So import Wavefront OBJ, make sure that keep vert order is checked, and I'm going to import in this Character Start Out OBJ. All right, I'm going to switch over to the UV Image Editor over here to the left, and if we go into Edit Mode, you'll see that the UVs look a bit like a mess. It's just because they're overlapping and what's really going on is that there are a bunch of different materials. If you look over here in the materials section, there, there are a bunch of different materials that are assigned to different parts of the body. Now all we have to do to get this to work in ZBrush is to lay it out in the way that each uh, material over here will have its own UV tile. So how do you do that? First thing to do, I'm going to deselect everything and I'll, if I select a material over here, and hit select down here. It's going to select all the vertices that this material is assigned to. So that's what it's that's what it looks like. Now to move these to a separate UV tile, all I have to do is to move all of these UVs over here by the exact number of pixels of this texture that's assigned to it. So how many pixels is that? I'm not really sure, so I'm just going to unlink that texture. And now that nothing's assigned to it, Blender's going to treat this like a 256 by 256 texture. So now what I could do is I can select everything hitting by hitting A, and I'm going to hit G, and then X to constrain it in the X axis, and hit 256. And there it is on its own UV tile. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do that for all of these materials. This is what our UVs look like now. So no more overlapping UVs. This is something that ZBrush would be able to work with. So now let's export this out and bring it back into ZBrush. So I'm going to go into File, Export, Wavefront OBJ, and bring that into its own folder from Blender. And I'm going to save that out as UVs fixed. And of course, make sure that keep vertex order down here. Make sure that's checked. So I'm going to hit export, and let's go back into ZBrush. Back in ZBrush, I'm going to import in that OBJ as a separate tool. So I'm going to switch tools right now, and I'm going to hit import, and here's our UV fix.obj. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over the UVs using the UV master. So I'm going to go into Z plugin, I'm just going to dock this over to the right. Down here in UV master, I'm going to hit copy UVs. I'm going to switch over to our sculpted mesh, this one over here, and I'm going to go and hit paste UVs. And that should have, oh wait, it's waiting, there we go, and that should have our UVs copied over into our sculpted mesh. Now it's time to start bringing our character back into Character Creator. So I'm going to export out this mesh, this low resolution mesh, and I'm going to go into its own ZBrush folder, and I'm going to save this out as edited character and save that out. That's pretty much it for the OBJ. Now to bake out our normal maps. 
So to do that, I'm going to go back into uh, yeah, back into Z plugin, and I'm going to open up Multi Map Exporter. And these are the settings I'm going to use. I just want the normal map. I'm going to set the texture size to 4096. If you want to shrink it down later, you can do that. Now to our export options. So I need yeah, smooth normals. These are basically the settings I'm going to use. I'm going to hit create all maps, uh, make a new folder. Call that normal maps. And save that out. Now that the normal maps are done baking, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to save out a bunch of different textures corresponding to the number of UV tiles you laid out in your 3D program. But we're only going to really need for this character just the head and head at the body normal maps. And I think this is the body normal map over here. Yeah, that's it. And I think the head is this one. Yeah, there we go. So once that's done, time to start bringing these back into character creator. Back inside Character Creator, let's bring in that mesh that we edited inside ZBrush. So let's go to Create, Morph Slider, I'm going to select Default Morph for a Source Morph, and File for a Target Morph, and let's select that file that we edited from ZBrush. Here we go, Edited Character.obj, and for this checksum file path, we're going to load in that obj key file that was exported along with our initial obj from Character Creator. Here we go, Character Start, obj key, and you can type in the name here, but this is fine. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. We have our slider over here in our modify panel to the right. But before we turn this up to 100, I'm going to go into Actor. I'm going to reset all the sliders so that it resets back to this neutral character. And now I'm going to go into... Now I'm going to turn this edited character slider that we created and turn that up to 100. And there we go. Here is our mesh that we edited in ZBrush now inside Character Creator. Now since this is a stylized character that we're working on, I want to edit the textures and not use the default skin textures that we have here. So to do that, I'm just going to export again another OBJ file so that we can paint this exact model inside a painting program. So again, X is Y up, part full body, and export I'm going to save this out as, let's call it, for texturing. Now we switch over to Blender for texture painting. The OBJ from Character Creator comes with a material file and textures, and Blender reads that automatically, so you can go straight to texture paint mode without having to do any setup. I'm going to be using Blender for this step because I need to be able to paint seamlessly across multiple UV tiles for the head and the body. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm just going to be modifying the default textures. And all I'm really doing is getting rid of most of the skin detail. This character's style doesn't work very well with realistic skin textures, so I just want to add some subtle color variation. And I'm using here as a speckled alpha that I loaded in with a bit of jitter and the rotation set to random. Now for the eyebrows. I'm still using the same alpha mostly, but I turned off the random rotation and turned down the spacing to approximate the look of hair. Now that the textures are pretty much done, I'm going to start loading them back into Character Creator. So I'm going to select our character over here. In our Modify panel, switch over to our Materials. Over here we can see a list of materials. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this with the character's head. And down here in our texture settings, we can see the default textures. I'm going to replace them with the textures that we created. So just double click on one of those swatches. And as you can see, I moved all the textures into this folder just so that it's more organized. And I'm going to load in our head diffuse. There it is. And in the bump, I'm going to load in our head normals. And I'm going to load in our specular. 
And that's pretty much it for the character's head. I'm going to go ahead and load up the textures for the rest of the body. And there we go, that's all the textures loaded. And if you noticed, I even created some custom textures for her eyes and eyelashes. So for the body, that's pretty much it. Now I think we can move on to the creation of her clothes.